Uh, okay, uh, so I'm, I've got John Hunminer, professor in law at Duke University, uh, here with me. Uh, we uh, hosted a round table uh, just a few minutes ago on the um, environmental regulation and the uh, transit trade investment uh, partnership. Um, one point that you raised uh, was uh, related to the environmental regulation, risk regulation between uh, and differences between Europe and the United States. Uh, would you like to elaborate a bit on that? Sure, and thank you for having me here. It's been a pleasure to be here. Um, people often say that environmental and risk regulation is more stringent and more precautionary in Europe than in the United States. And we were interested in investigating that question and. Uh, after uh, an extensive research project of more than 10 years, what we found is that actually if you look at the um, specific policy making, in general it's very similar in the United States and Europe. Many of the regulatory standards for environmental risks, food safety risks, and other uh, health safety and environmental issues are uh, quite similar in the United States and Europe. But there are some differences. And there, what's interesting is that the differences are not only in one direction, they're in both directions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes European regulation is more stringent, more precautionary, it tries to anticipate risks uh, and prevent them earlier. But other times it's the United States that's more stringent or more precautionary. Um, so for example, some areas of food safety, genetically modified foods or hormones in beef, Europe has had uh, more precautionary policies. Um, but at the same time, uh, on some other food safety policies, uh, such as mad cow disease, turns out the United States has had more stringent policies, not only for beef, but for blood donations, where there's a, a hypothesis that possibly uh, the mad cow disease infectious agent could be transmitted through blood. The US has very stringent, more stringent policies than in Europe. Uh, on uh, air pollution, uh, clearly, the European policies on greenhouse gas emissions have been uh, more stringent and adopted earlier than those in the United States. But uh, by contrast, on uh, fine particle air pollution, um, so-called PM 2.5, the smallest particles that have a very uh, serious health impact, it's the United States that has a standard that's uh, significantly more stringent than uh, in Europe. and. Uh, more protective of human health. So what we observe is a, a variation of particular policies on particular risks uh, rather than uh, regulation being generally more stringent or more precautionary on one side of the Atlantic or the other. And that means that any effort to try to cooperate uh, through a trade agreement uh, or bilateral agreements on the, these regulations is going to uh, work through a whole variety of uh, uh, different relationships. Uh, sometimes European regulation is the more stringent, sometimes American. <clears throat> and uh, it will be interesting to see how the, that cooperation unfolds over time to try to uh, improve the coherence of transatlantic regulation. Of course, one, one very recent example of uh, environmental regulation uh, we've seen in the United States, where the Environmental Protection Agency just a few weeks ago uh, launched their plan for regulating greenhouse gas emissions. Um, what, what is your understanding of uh, what the EPA is, is about to do? That's right. Uh, so just two weeks ago, the U.S. Uh, Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, issued a major uh, new rule, uh, a regulation on greenhouse gas emissions from the electric power sector. And uh, it's important to understand where this rule comes from. Um, there were efforts for uh, many years to get new climate change legislation to be enacted by the U.S. Congress. Um, the, that was not fully uh, successful. Uh, but uh, in 2007, the United States Supreme Court ruled that an older law called the Clean Air Act applies to greenhouse gas emissions. And so it's under the authority of that law that the EPA, uh, during the uh, administration of President Obama, has been issuing a series of rules on greenhouse gas emissions, first from um, mobile sources, cars and trucks, 
and now from stationary sources, uh, electric power plants. And so the rule that just came out two weeks ago is the latest and, and the most important of these rules, and it asks each state of the United States to adopt its own policies to uh, restrict greenhouse gas emissions <clears throat> over the next uh, 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it gives each state a target for reducing those emissions, but it gives each state a lot of flexibility to uh, come up with its own set of policies, and it tries to encourage the states to collaborate, to work together in regional agreements. Um, this in part is uh, helping to uh, su support the policies that have been already adopted in American states like California and the northeastern states, which have a group called the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. So it, it will be uh, important and interesting to see how this develops. First of all, this is only a proposed mm -hmm. rule in the United States. An agency has to issue a proposed and then a final rule, and then it will remain for the states to uh, uh, adopt their policies uh, in uh, response to the EPA rule. And do you foresee that uh, the proposed mm -hmm. rules will be the one actually implemented, or you you think there will be a major well, change? The, yeah, the, in, usually uh, there is some change from the proposed to the final rule. I mean, I, I don't know uh, exactly what will happen in this case, but um, President Obama has uh, asked the EPA to issue a proposed rule in June 2014, and then a final rule in June 2015, and then the states would have to come up with their uh, policies in response by 2016, although EPA has now said they could have, if they need more time, they can ask, states can ask for more time. So uh, it's at least uh, at least two years before we'll, we'll see uh, the types of policies that are actually being adopted under this new EPA rule. Thank you so much, Professor. Thanks.